Hey kindergarten, I hope you're having a terrific Tuesday today and you're ready to get started with math. So we're going to begin with our number talk and working on composing and decomposing numbers. So let's take a look. Okay, what number do I have composed up here? What number is this? This is representing the number six. Let's count it together. One, two, three, four, five, six. So here I have composed six. What is a way that we could decompose six? Remember, decompose means that we're going to be breaking it apart into two groups. So how could we decompose six? Well, let's see, what if I take, let's say two from this side and put the rest over here? How have we decomposed six? We've decomposed six into a group of two and one, two, three, four. So six can be decomposed into two and four. All right, let's compose six again. What's another way that we could decompose six? What if we take and put them like this? How have we decomposed six now? Now we've decomposed six into equal groups, haven't we? Did you notice these are equal? They have the same amount. So we've decomposed six into three and three. So six can be decomposed into a group of three and a group of three. Let's compose six again. Let's think of one more way that we could decompose six. What if I just take one from the group and break it apart and put the others in the other group now? How have I decomposed six now? Now we've decomposed six into a group of one and one, two, three, four, five, five. So one and five is one way that you could decompose six. You could break it into a group of one and five. Remember, decompose is where we break it apart into two groups. Compose is where we take two groups and put them together to make one whole. Okay, we are going to move on to our word problem now. We're going to use apps check to help us analyze, plan, solve, and check. Whoops, that was a crazy line, but that's okay. Okay, here's our word problem for today. Let's read it together. Gil caught six fish. He threw four of them back in the water. How many fish does Gil have left? Okay, let's read this one more time. And this time, let's listen really closely for the question that we're being asked. Gil caught six fish. He threw four of them back in the water. How many fish does Gil have left? What question are we being asked to solve? How many fish does Gil have left? See, it ends with a big old question mark. So this is the question that we're being asked to solve. So now let's read back through and listen for anything that's gonna be important about fish. Gil caught six fish. What's important in that sentence? Six. It tells us how many fish he started with. He threw four of them back in the water. What's important in that sentence? I hear some words that are important and a number. The number four is important. And then also through back. Think about what's happening if he's throwing fish back. So he has all of these six fish and he throws some back. Is that adding or subtracting? Think about that as we move on to our plan. Okay, so we know Gil had how many fish total? 
He had six fish. He threw four of them back. We want to know how many out of those six, after he threw four back, does he have left? So are we adding or subtracting? Gil has six fish. He throws four back. How many does he have left? We're going to have to subtract to figure that out. When we're getting rid of fish or throwing them back, that's subtracting or separating. We also have the whole in one part. Anytime we have the whole in one part and we're solving for the other part, you have to subtract to do that. So our number sentence will be six minus four, and we're going to solve and figure out what that equals. All right, today, the first way that I'm going to solve this problem is by drawing a picture. So I'm going to draw a picture of six fish. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Okay, so here are my six fish. Now, Gil threw four of them back. So we're going to X out four. One, two, three, four. How many fish does Gil have left? One, two. So it looks like he has two fish left, but we are going to check it using a different strategy before we say that's the, definitely the answer. Okay, so let me grab my counters and my 10 frame. All right, first I need to show the, four, the six fish that Gil caught. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so Gil had the six fish. And then he threw four of them back. One, two, three, four. How many fish does Gil have left? One, two. He has two left. So see, both times we solved this problem, we got the answer of two. So six minus four must be two. And then we can answer the question in this problem now as well. How many fish does Gil have left? He has two fish. All right, we're going to move on to working on graphing a little bit more today. Graphing can be a bit challenging to do virtually, so we're just going to do the best we can. But you may want to practice at home collecting data and graphing. All right, I'm going to start by writing out a few numbers and letters. So we're actually going to make a tally chart in a minute with numbers and letters. Let me write the word numbers and the word letters. What letter does the word letters start with? Letters. Letters starts with L. Okay, numbers and letters. So let me write some out. Okay, here I have some numbers and letters. Sorry, it's a little crooked. There we go. Let's look and see how many numbers do I have? So I'm collecting data right now on this little group here. And we're going to see how many out of the group are numbers and how many are letters. So how many numbers do we see? Remember a number is like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. All of those are numbers. Letters are what's in the alphabet. So A, B, C, D, E, F, G, all the way to Z. Okay, let's look for numbers first. Here's one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so there are six numbers. I need to make six tally marks. One, two, three, 
four. Now remember when we get to five, we have to close the gate and do a slanted tally mark like that. So there's five and then six. This represents six numbers. I did six tally marks to represent six numbers. Now, how many letters do we see? Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six. Ah, so there are six letters also. So we're going to make six tally marks for letters. One, two, three, four. What happens when I get to five? Close the gate. Five, six. Okay, so letters and numbers. Did we have more letters or more numbers? Neither, right? They were both equal. We had an equal amount of numbers and an equal amount of letters because we had six of each. Okay, so I could take this data and make a picture graph also if I wanted to. So I could do numbers and letters, and I'm going to erase this so it's not in the way. Numbers and letters. Sorry, let me fix that. And then to represent each one, I could use a rectangle, anything. So I'll do rectangles to represent each. So there were six numbers. So I'm going to do six rectangles. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then how many letters did I have? I had six letters. So we're going to, again, do six rectangles. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so do you remember what this is called? What type of graph this is? This is a picture graph. Picture graph. It's called a picture graph because it uses pictures to represent each number or each amount. What is this type of graph called? This is a tally chart. It's called a tally chart because it uses tally marks to represent our data here. Okay, so we have a picture graph and a tally chart. Let's make one more graph together today. Let's use, I'm just going to use some counters here. Okay, now I'm going to shake them up in my hand and then pour them out on my board. Okay, here we go. Woo! I'm going to just move them closer together. Okay, so I can make a real object graph here and sort these counters into two different groups. How would you sort these counters? I would sort these counters by color because they are two different colors. So I would sort them by red and by yellow. Okay, so let's sort them into those groups now. So red and yellow. Okay. How many reds are there on my graph? There are one, two, three red counters. How many yellow counters are there? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There are eight yellow counters. All right, so let me ask you a few questions. Which counters had the least amount? 
the red counters had the least amount. They only had three. Remember, least means the smallest. Which group of counters had the most or greatest amount? Yellow had the greatest amount. Remember, it had eight counters. Eight is greater than three, so yellow had the greatest amount. I could take this data here on this real object picture graph or real object graph and make a picture graph. So, um, it does not matter which way your graph goes. I could do it like this, where I write the colors here and then do my pictures, or you could make your graph like this, going up and down. There's just not very much room to write my words. Going up and down and graph your pictures this way. Either way is fine, and you can you will see it either way and be asked questions about it either way. So make sure you know it doesn't matter which way it faces, it still shows the same amount of data. Okay, so for the pictures on my picture graph this time, I'm just going to use circles since the counters are already circles anyways. Okay, so how many red counters did we have? There were three red counters, so I need to draw three circles. See, one, two, three. It's the same amount. How many yellow counters did we have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So this graph, this picture graph, and this real object graph represent the same data. They both represent the number of counters. And so we do need to make sure that our graphs have titles. So this could be titled counters or color of counters. This that I'm writing here is the title of our graph. Graphs will always have titles. So it's always important to read the title. That way you understand what's being shown on the graph. We're going to work some more on graphing as the week goes on. We will see you then. Bye.